to the new episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. We have a guest today. She is an associate professor, Department of Education, and the vice principal of the school college Guwahati. She had been a academician for the last 33 years. She has authored more than 150 textbooks for graduates and BA students of Guwahati, Dibrugar, and Boroland universities. She has presented number of papers at the national and international seminars. She has been a resource person to the University of California, Berkeley, USA. She is a life skill trainer under which she has provided training to more than 5,000 youths all over India. She is at present the secretary Chinmaya Mission Worldwide Agati Center. She has written a 10 number of articles in the newspapers, journals, magazines on social and spiritual topic. Apart from that, I feel very proud and very happy that she has been my classmate in school. Dr. Sunita Agarwal, welcome you to the Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. Thank you. Thank you, Anutosh. Thank you so much. I was just going through your CV and uh, the books, a few number of books that was uh, given to me today for this set. I was just going through it. I was like, you haven't left up anything. You, uh, uh, you have written articles on uh, psychology, you have written articles on how to qualify for uh, ACS, you have written uh, books on uh, life skills, you have written books on yoga, yeah, and apart from the subject that you teach. How do you do all this? Uh, actually it all started with the writing of an HS first year book and then uh, it didn't stop after that. It's like you know like now it has become a passion for me and the publisher they keep on asking so you write uh, madam you please write this for us. And the books you are talking like about yoga, life skill, positive psychology and all, they are in the course. Okay. So they are included in the course, so that made me write. But the journey was very interesting because as I kept on writing, you have to study first to write. I also learned so many things, mm -hmm. new things about my own subject. And uh, it made my perspective more wider and now it's... I can understand my students better, I can understand individuals better. So that's how I have also gained by writing these books. Yeah, but then uh, you have not left anything, you know. I mean, uh, the people, the students who must have read your books, and you must have, you know, uh, so many students in the last 33 years of service. Yes, uh, in fact, when you are talking about my, I have written about ACS. APSC when I was teaching the students and then they were like ma'am why don't you compile and make a book for us. So it was their idea okay. and I feel very proud you know when in their interviews and all they said that they had read my book and got through. Uh, yes I when I go and meet students sometimes I go somewhere and then the students they come running and they'll be like oh ma'am it's like we have never met you we have read your books I passed through with your books and all. So yes, that's uh, that really inspires also to uh, write one, more. Uh, one thing yeah. that I uh, remember of my, uh, the school days is like uh, <laughs> Sunita was, uh, you know, she was the most dominating one in the 21 boys and girls classroom. And she was like, you know, for anything, what I remember uh, about her school days is that she was always running out. She was doing everything. She was, uh, you know, she had that leadership quality when we were in school in class 8 and 9. And I see that today, uh, even nothing has changed. She is, uh, you know, a born leader. I mean, she has been doing so many wonderful things, inspiring students, uh, you know, in different uh, kind of publications. 
her classroom and her devotion and dedication in her services. See, so Sunita, uh, when did you think that you will become an academician? Ah, that's a big question. I became an academician by chance because uh, my family is completely into business. Mm. And uh, when I was studying my MA, I went and asked my teachers, what do I do after this? Well, what can I do? So they were like, you can become a teacher in a college. And I was like, oh, so you just need an MA to be a teacher. And then that's how it started. I applied the day I passed, the very day I applied, within 10 days I got the appointment. And uh, yes, when I went to the classes, I started understanding I was the right person at the right place. Mm -hmm. And accidentally, mm -hmm. accidentally right person. So, uh, maybe this, this is, uh, uh, you know, it, it must have happened with many of us. Uh, very few of us uh, had ever thought that we would be a teacher because we have seen the work of a teacher. Yes. And today that we are sitting here and doing this podcast, it's because we had some wonderful teachers. Yes, There's no of doubt course, about it. Of course. And those teachers are what we remember almost every day, in every work of our life. Yes. And uh, you know, when I even meet uh, them sometimes, it gives me such a wonderful feeling. You know, talking to them and uh, because see, life uh, teaches you uh, right when you are in the school. And then later on, okay, it becomes your own life and you have different... Uh, apart from writing books, uh, you have presented a lot of papers. Yes. So, uh, uh, and you have been a resource person to the University of California, Berkeley. Berkeley. Could you share something about how it... Uh, uh, yeah, I am myself, you know, as I went through and keep on, kept on meeting people and all, I developed a lot of interest in women issues, women okay. and youth issues. So there was a conference there in California, San Francisco. We were supposed to go there and then uh, one of the persons I met and then she was like, why don't you come to our university to be a resource person? So that's how I went there and uh, my papers and all, they are mostly on women issues, youth issues. And uh, recently, uh, it has turned something to very much to gender issues now, I say. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, our college also, the college I work in, and uh, myself also have got engaged, too much involved, I think, in working for the LGBTQI people. Okay. So, I have read a lot on them. I am associated with a lot could you, of them. Could you just uh, share what is ex exactly what? Uh, yeah, uh, like you know, LGBTQ we all know, like lesbians, gay and transgender and okay. all, that is the abbreviation completely. Uh, we usually, when we meet the transgender people, we meet, we think, we have seen them on the buses, we have seen them on the train, always disturbing us. But they have a different world, you know, like uh, I, when I met them, when I... Uh, it's not the people, I'm not talking about the people who beg on the streets. But lot of them, they have studied a lot. They are working a lot. And uh, they are doing so much for their own community also. So when I met them and I uh, interacted with them, I started like another different type of feeling started coming for them. That was of empathy. Like most okay. of them, they are not accepted by the family, not mm -hmm. by the parents and then, uh, then the society. But uh, now they are talking of education. So when they have come up and one thing I have seen in them, they are highly, highly creative and talented. Okay. Very talented. Like okay. Very, very and uh, now uh, they have been uh, somewhat accepted. Yes. And the society, in, uh, you know, we find them, uh, they have a different kind of category. So, uh, yes, things are becoming uh, different. Uh, and uh, yes, with time, uh, things will change. Uh, so, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, how was your experience in California? Uh, it was very nice. We went and I, my topic was like uh, talking about women development with special reference to Assam. But uh, people, some of them, they still had a lot of misconceptions. Like, uh, 
they thought that uh, we all girls we get married at the age of 13 or 14 we are not allowed to study i said no that's not uh, the, that's not the fact and then one of the ladies she told no no i went to gujarat and i came to know i said no if somebody has passed you that information you are very wrong because uh, i myself have been you're to an gujarat example for that. Yeah, yeah no no gujarat uh, i met so many friends of mine mm-hmm. they are all principals and teachers and right. on high right. post so yes. i said that's not fair that's uh-huh. it uh-huh. That was. And uh, you are a life skill trainer. So what yes. exactly you train during life skills? Ah uh, yes, life skill. You know, like uh, basic. I am trained under RGNIYD. Okay. That is uh, wing of government of India, Ministry of Youth Affairs. Uh, we we teach ten life skills to children. Mm-hmm. So they are like problem solving, critical thinking, how to deal with emotions, how to deal with stress. And, and the, they are they are part of the 21st century skills. Yes, yeah. and uh, basically uh, the best one I like is self awareness. Mm. When we talk to them and we try to, I try to connect to them. They are like they are not even aware mm. that uh, I have this inside me, or these are my good qualities, these are my bad qualities. And then most of the problems in when we do life skills is, uh, it's about emotions. Right. It's all about emotions. It's all about stress. and uh, it's all about the gap between the parents and the children still it is there in our times anutosh we had gap but uh, it was not like what we have now mm-hmm. the gap was different our parents they they were like uh, i don't know about your father our father he was like he used to get in we were all scared of him or yeah. out of respect uh, yes. or something like that isn't yes. it so yes. we never told no to him whatever he said mm-hmm. and they always guided us silently but uh, now they are, they have one child or something like that tempering fearing something and then so that that is issues that is because, are there uh, yeah. you know what i feel is that uh, when we were in a small and very in school we had we used to stay in almost like a joint family yes but nowadays you have this nuclear families and that is also one yes. of the reasons why you have this Too much of obsession about yes, the child. Yes, and then uh, uh, they don't even have places to play. Right. That's another big issue coming up. Hmm. We had places to play outside. They yeah. don't. They have because, nothing uh, to play outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Because nowadays everything has become digital, yeah. and because of COVID-19, children have become yes, more uh, glued to mobiles, mobiles and yeah. digital technologies. I always tell them, "Abhi to dunya meri muthi mein." Yeah, so, but then uh, <laughs> no, it, it it really has its own limits. You know, it it even reflects in their education system yes. in the in the path that they have taken. And uh, uh, life skills are very important nowadays for this tool. Uh, what did actually happen when you first told your father that I am going to become a teacher? Uh, What was his impression at that actually, time? Actually, it was uh, not my father. After I got married, when I was in degree, and then I studied after that. So the reaction was uh, like uh, I I told my husband I'm going to apply and I'll be a teacher. So his family was very happy. And then I told uh, Papa I've been appointed. He was really very happy. because uh, like uh, my uncle was a teacher in the village uh, where we originally belong from in gulaghar my dad was the headmaster there for some days so teaching is obviously always come mane uh, it is considered to a very respectable job and uh, he was really very very happy when i said that i have been appointed and he was like don't worry about whatever money you are getting at least you will be in a very good job Really, They, that that's how our parents used to, re, you know, yes. react in yes. those days. You know, being a teacher, uh, you know, was something uh, like so something out of the world. Uh, you were going to be a teacher. I mean, teacher is someone whom we look up to. Uh, you remember we had uh, Kachari sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, in school he used yeah. to teach us science. I used to bully him also. <laughs> Uh, and you know he used to teach us straight from his heart yes not the books and the things and he used to just come and then uh, talk to us teaching science just like a uh, storytelling yes wonderful uh, narration and the way he used to 
tell us that this is how you have to look at things in this yes. way. Yes. Really, we had some very good, uh, very, very good teachers. And uh, what is your uh, connection with Chinmaya Mission? Uh, Chinmaya Mission, actually, in 2004, we had some program in the college. And uh, then my father, he told that we are having a quiz competition. Can you help us in it? So I got connected that way. And then 2006, there was a camp. They told me you become the coordinator. And then there I met my, now the one who is my spiritual guru, Swami Chinman, Mitrananji. And then from then, no looking back. So it says the guru comes in your life, uh -huh. himself or herself, and God wants. So that's so, it. Uh, and I got associated and. Uh, and you have been the secretary of Chinmaya Mission. Yeah, I was I was associated from 2006. I was looking after the youth wing, we call Chinmaya Yuva Kendra, from 2008. And then uh, in 2020, I became the secretary. Then I had to leave for some purpose mm -hmm. because I had my own engagements. Again, uh, last uh, from last December, I took over as the secretary. Okay. And uh, how many of your students have ventured into teaching? Lot many, lot. Okay. And uh, the best thing is that they will come and first they will say, ma'am we understand it's a tough job. It's now we understand why you schooled us in the classroom exactly. when we talk. Exactly. That's and, uh, and it's good sometimes, you know, like it's not about boasting, but sometimes they say, ma'am we were inspired by you, we want to become a teacher like you. So that really inspires. That, that, that's that, the best part of teaching uh, That's the best award yes. the teacher yes, can give obviously, again. Obviously. You know, when the students uh, you have taught 20 years before, and they come back to you and tell you, okay, it's because of you that yeah, we, what we have. That's, uh, that's, that's one of the best uh, return that yes. a teacher can get. Yes. But you are teaching in the college. Yes. And uh, I have been teaching in school. So there are two different uh, yes. things. College, they are much more matured and uh, they have their own judgment. Yes. They can think about what to do and what not to do. Sometimes they are biased, sometimes they are not. So how is it that you handle the students now that you are a vice principal of this poor college? Uh, you know, like uh, Anutosh, throughout my journey, yes, one or two tough students were there. But I feel you can win them over by love. That's yes. it. You, you love them. Mm -hmm. You scold them. Uh, again, in my college, if you go and ask, and they'll say, who scolds you most? Sunita, ma'am. And then say, who loves you most? Sunita, ma'am. So I scold them, but scolding is they understand why. And uh, as a vice principal, like you were uh, telling that in the school, I have to run over all over. So like um, in the college also, it's like, I keep on running, tick, 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 all the sides. So, mm. students, they know me. Uh, it's, you know, I feel it's your teaching also. Like, uh, how you teach, that can bring discipline in the class. And that commands the respect from the students. And, and you know, your involvement with the yes, school. Yes, commitment. That belongingness with the school. That the commitment. children understand. Yes. The, the children understand that understand. this teacher is uh, there for us all, at any yes, time. Yes. They can come to you for any kind of a problem. So I am sure uh, if your your students must be watching this uh, podcast and they would be happy uh, and I am doubly happy because she is my classmate also. <laughs> uh, Same here. Anything that you remember uh, which uh, you wanted to do but you could not do uh, as a teacher? As a teacher, I you know like uh, wanted to do is like I would have loved to let them do certain things apart from studies, mm -hmm. which you know we are bound, like syllabus, you have to finish the syllabus, students are always bound like that. See, I had a batch of students, which I always tell and they were the closest to my heart. Those students were not academically great, Okay. but uh, they were great in other things, like you tell them something. And it's done. Mm -hmm. Whether you tell uh, tomorrow I want this room decorated, you don't have to tell them anything else. 
So you give the things and they'll do it. Yeah, because uh, uh, yes, that, that's how you uh, instill the yes. leadership quality. Yeah, but I feel, I feel the system we have now hmm. doesn't allow them to develop those. Yeah, they have so much of pressure only on studies, studies, studies. As if uh, academics is but, everything, uh, you know, like... See, uh, yes, studies are there, but the new education policy says that yes. the more uh, efforts uh, that we have to give to our students is in the field of creativity. So, when you have to give them full freedom for creativity, for developing creativity, you have to give them space. Yes. And uh, the schools are now trying to, you know, create that space for them. If a child wants, uh, it's not necessary that the child will be only good in mathematics and science. The child can be also good in painting, can be good in dancing, yes, singing, yes, any other activity, uh, photography or, you know, any other skills. And it's uh, again, it, it's again uh, about skill development. Because uh, this is, you know, when you develop uh, the skills in a child, that actually makes way for his uh, security in the future. Yes, you know, he, yes, he, yes. I mean, there is no, always not a job waiting for a child, you know, where, that you pass out and you get a job standing there. I mean, job market is gone nowadays. But when the child is equipped with all these skills, I am sure the, uh, the child will not be in a kind of a stress once he is out for getting a yes. job or good doing something. They will be able to survive doing something somewhere. Uh, and any wonderful uh, memories that you have with your 33 years of academic? Lot, lot of memories like uh, what to say, the students, the way they come, the way... No, I any any uh, special memory that you have uh, uh, which right you can now, share? Yeah, maybe. right now maybe I am not being able to connect but uh, uh, I can just talk about uh, one or two of my students like the way they have connected. Mm. Uh, there is one student of mine, obviously all are close to her but uh, she will be like, she never misses teacher's day and she never misses my birthday. Oh wow. So, the teachers in the college, they will say, hmm, today your birthday is there, no? so she'll come only. I'll be like, maybe. No, 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 she will come. Uh, so, that type of uh, things and there are memories, maybe now I'm not being able to recall, but uh, lot of things I have learned from the college, the love I have got from there. And uh, like what you are talking now about the talent the children had, I just wanted to share. Recently, our college, uh, we launched, uh, we like staged the drama, Karenga Ligiri of Jyoti Prasad Agarwala. So, it was an idea of the principal. He was like, uh, let's make them do a drama. And uh, none of the students, those who acted, they had ever done acting. Mm -hmm. But when it, they were on the stage, two hours, we were glued to the seat. None of us moved like what actors they came out. You know, you, they had it inside it, them and then that came out. So that type, of, that is the type of education we have to give them now. That's what, that's that, what, that, yeah. that is what I was telling you that yeah. creativity is always there in every child. He, the child just needs that somebody should, you know, ignite that. Yes. And you have a stage and you go there and you present. So, that's that's a really wonderful uh, in, uh, you know uh, initiative, and this is how we can give space to a child you know, yes, to do something, to do uh, to you know a child has a lot of dreams and fantasies, and unless uh, and until it, he, he or she gets a space, uh, if, if, because the life of a child is uh, by the time he comes to class eleven and twelve. Already that rat race starts. Yes, rat race. Yes. Uh, you have to be, you know, qualify in for some the exam best. or some this and then even if you don't want to do it, you will be compelled to do it. Uh, the parents pressure is there, the peer pressure is there, there is pressure from the society. So where do the child go? So, uh, it was really uh, wonderful uh, talking to you about uh, your uh, life experiences. And uh, 
now that you have very little time for service yes I yes yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, i'll be retiring what? in november oh uh, okay yeah because uh, yeah we are the same batch so uh, just a yes. couple of months and uh, what do you have your as your retirement plans because now you will have a lot of time yes uh no i'm not going to leave teaching but it will be like uh, uh, many institutions they are approaching me that mm. you come even my own college they don't yeah. want to leave me but uh, i'll take up some teaching like freelancing type of teaching mm -hmm. i'll go on my own i have uh, planned to write a book which is my very uh, which i have always dreamt of about women and something relating to my life also okay and uh, and yes i want to roam over so i'll be visiting places which i have not visited till then till now uh, that's my plan later on let's see how as life takes me it's okay. so uh, wish you all the best thank you that you have uh, all your dreams you can uh, fulfill your dreams so that was uh, talking to dr sunita agarwal and in the next episode of pixel narratives with anutosh we'll have another guest talking to you and sharing his or her life skills take care goodbye